Kai is back up north as a guest of Trigger from the Norwegian Red Deer Centre on the island of Svanoy. On this visit, he's been promised the opportunity of joining friends for a driven hunt, but considering the scale of the workforce, we aren't talking huge blocks of woodland being pushed through here. Maybe it's quality, not quantity. The dogs behind us get really, really excited. Triggers on the camera. But today, I'm using Trigger's rifle, the Sauer 202. Really, really, really nice rifle, 308. The Zeiss Victory. Scope there, the 3 by 12 by 56 we now in the correct position, just waiting for the others to be positioned as well. And then I release the dogs, and they already smelled the deer nearby. So uh, we'll just see what happens. It's hinds and calves for Kai today. Trigger listens to the dogs and gets Kai set up when he feels there might be some action. <laughs> and within about 30 seconds, they've gotten to a scent straight away and found deer. You can hear them in the background, going crazy, barking away. Trigger is particularly keen for the Welsh wizard to get something today as he wants to show the game chef a few tricks of the trade in the chiller. Trigger is a world authority on the farming and management of red deer. That includes graliking and preparing the deer, ensuring the meat is the best it possibly can be. News arrives that one of the group has shot an older hind. The Norwegians are well prepared for the extraction. These are easy pickings compared to a moose. A second outing delivers a shooting opportunity for Kai. He shoots a red calf with the Zawa. Took a shot right in the chest, so it looked like to be a good shot. We're just going to go now and take a look and see what the situation is. Really good sized calf, shot it straight in the chest, took out all its vitals, didn't run very far at all, and she dropped just metres from where we shot. This is when the work begins. Kai extracts the deer, and then it's over to Trigger in the chiller. So we're just going to grill it. Carefully. Opening. Make sure that it's not hair on the meat. And this is very critical, this area because now I have the stomach just underneath here. So I put my fingers like this, it means it goes like that, to protect from this sharp end of the knife, to not puncture the stomach, the big stomach. Then I go all the way down like this, and then I turn it always on its right side, right hand side. So left of the beast is here, and that's because the big stomach is on the left side. So next step then is washing my hands. So what I'm now going to find is the spleen. And the spleen is always on the left side of the beast. And I wash my hands. And now I take the spleen and push it off the stomach because it's fastened to the stomach. Like this. And slowly, slowly, I take the stomach out. But I have to be very careful. Because if you puncture this uh, stomach, it will be a lot of bacteria inside the animals, which we don't like. And then I, I find the food pipe. As you can see, here is a food pipe. Then I use this to block the food pipe. And I look it like just in front, sorry, just in front of the stomach here. You can see that there. And then I have to take the other one 
just in front of the diaphragm. So this zone between here now I will cut off. And that is to prevent the infection or contamination of inside the beast. And especially the filet, which is just underneath here, it's not far away from us now. So now this one is cutted, you see, the cut. And there's nothing much there for contamination. And then I have to be very careful. But what I'm going to do now for you, but it will start smelling, <laughs> for make it easier for you to see inside, is the puncture. Like that, okay? So now you easily can see. Because as long as I've got this one outside, it's no danger for contamination inside. And all that gas, you saw all that gas? That is why this should be done within two hours. Otherwise it will expand and it might break somewhere. And then everything inside will be contaminated. So the next step then is to cut this, uh, we call it uh, co uh, Kreuz, which is uh, where the stomach, everything is fastened up in the back of the beast. I have to take this one off. You see it's coming off. And then we nearly finished. The next cut then is where this whole system is going to the liver, the cleaning system. So then I have to make a cut along the liver. And on these animals, unlike the sheep and cow, there is no gallbladder, I think you call it. So now everything is loose. It's coming out easily. And everything inside is clean. And I push this out. And then again, the last clip. To block any faces to get out. So now everything that could contaminate the beast uh, is out, but we still have some things to do, but this one must be done within two hours. For the next step now, we could wait another two hours, so that we in total would wait four hours before doing the next. What I'm going to do now is just to make, behind the Achilles, Achilles sena, I'm going to make some small openings, because we're going to lift it up soon. But first I cut the legs off. And I'll do it here. How, hang on, how, how do you know where to cut the legs? Uh, you just know it. And the rule is it's always much further down than people think it is. Because if you cut fur further up, there still are some uh, junctions. Uh, but then you take off this Achilla, Achilla Sena. So you need to take it there. That's how it is. It is. And it's on, in the same place every time. So it's here, just there. But you have to take off the sinus all the way around and you can see the openings coming here now, slowly, like that. So next now is that we have to take out the urine bladder and the anus area must be opened all the way around like this. And that needs to be done within four hours. Because otherwise you risk that uh, bacteria from especially these gets into the meat as well, which I should not. So they we easily take out like that. Then again wash this hand, because now the hand is contaminated. But that was just to show you. And the water is 82 degrees. Should, should be. <laughs> should have been. Okay, okay, so then I finished this operation. We call it the Rodde in Norwegian, which means doing what I'm doing now. And with the Heinz, this is rather easy because this part is um, quite big, this opening.
So I have to be very careful here now, not to puncture nor the urine better or so if there's anything like this coming off I always do like that okay just to prevent them from being in that area so now it's more or less loose but I have to take everything out which I do then the opposite way but first I clean off this part as well this one because I don't want the hair to be dragged through that hole. So then I'm working from this side, grabbing the whole system, takes it out, just cuts and then you remember this one is back again. So the whole thing here now is completely uh, undamaged, which means any of these could contaminate the meat, and now it won't, because it's here, outside. Then I'm going to open the chest by just cutting down like this in the middle as far as I can, get in the middle all the way down in here, make an opening and get out some blood. The only time you need to bleed any of these would be if you should shoot them in the head, which we don't, because that's gruesome, that's not nice, might injure the beast. So normally we always shoot in the chest and then you don't need to bleed them. this and then when I cut down in the meat I need a saw. This saw I need to be very careful with as well because when I'm cutting here if I'm cutting too deep I will divide the heart and the heart is a delicacy and the heart is laying just underneath these bones. So I'm just splitting the bones. It's not very thick. Just splitting the bones as you see. There we are. So this one uh, we used to open uh, the chest where I splitted it with a saw like this. like that. Makes it easy for me to see what's inside there and then I start cutting the diaphragm and here you see the spleen, you see the liver, the diaphragm, here's the heart coming out but everything will now be taken out in uh, one piece. And as you can see, I leave the kidneys. These are the kidneys, leaving them behind. Those are the last things I take out. Just hang on. Like that. There we go. Nice shot, nice shot. You hit the ribs, so it's blint red, but uh, otherwise it's nice, and that's <laughs> probably why the direction changed a little bit as well. It was a bit angled, but it's a, it's a perfect shot, so it didn't go more than maybe 10 meters. So it's uh, completely emptied, but the organs are still hanging there, the lungs, uh, the heart, the spleen, and the liver, everything is together for me to check it if there's any bacteria, etc. But the whole chest, everything is emptied. And yes, normally we don't tell anyone 
to use, so we teach people not to use water out because you don't know the quality of the water. And if you have had an accident with uh, the stomach and some, some contamination, uh, it means you're only, only spreading the shit all over the body. You should never use the water. But inside here, this now is very clean, hygienically done. This water very soon will be 82 degrees. Uh, and it's clean, the water is uh, approved by authorities, it's very good quality water, there's no, nothing in it, and now it's, I can't even hold my hand to it, it's that warm. And the only thing I'm cleaning is inside the ribs, inside this area. So I'm cleaning the ribs to take off the blood. And that is to make it look nice and it's uh, far better when you're going to take it. Because no, this animal is hot, it's like still 39, 38, 37 degrees. It's 39 when it's alive and now it's slowly cooling down. And this water is 82, so this sound now is completely clean. But I never wash back here in this uh, stomach area at all. Only on the inside of the ribs to make it look nice and easier when you're going to process it later on. So what I can do now when it's hanging like this, or I could even put it further up to make it comfortable for myself. Because I now I've got the kidneys here. And I can take them out now if I like. Just to show you. Checking the kidneys. If there's any disease on this piece or not by cutting the kidneys in two pieces and I have to wash my hand of course not cutting the hand and then I look in the kidneys inside them and this one is perfectly well animals there's nothing wrong with this animal then I would see either I would see a very strange color that might be too big or it might be even uh, some um, bacteria in here something really wrong weird this one is normal so that's kidneys. And then I can check the lungs. And what I'm checking with the lungs is, is if there's anything uh, hard, some things feels like a bowl or here's maybe something, but everything is normal. There's no big things. And normally if you find something that would be uh, like parasites, the lung worms here, that's a normal thing to find, especially in, in uh, yearlings. Yearlings, hinds and spikers, you very often find a lot of long worms. But there's nothing wrong with the meat, it's just a problem for them. Then I turn this one around and I check the liver. See if there's anything on this liver. And the liver looks fine. And normally on young animals we can eat the liver. Elder animals, meaning three, four years and older, uh, you should be careful because this can contain a lot of uh, metal and things it's kind of accumulating in here but here I can see one parasite which is very common I see signs of liver flug which is very common on the coast of Norway uh, and all of these got it more or less and all the animals can be huge areas out of function of the liver but there's nothing wrong with the meat and the spleen is also con uh, completely normal both in size and color. So this animal is uh, now being checked uh, organ wise and from inside I see everything is symmetric it looks nice but to make the real uh, improvement I have to de-skin it but that I'll do tomorrow then I de-skin it because I have one uh, day 24 hours from it's been shot till I can uh, do the end of the control and then I have de skin it within 24 hours. So next thing I do now is take out these organs by cutting all the way down the throat like this and I cut them out. And I always do this after the checking and after the cleaning of the ribs. So, and I also cut it on, in that place because here it's blocked, so there will be no contamination here. There will be nothing from uh, the food pipe coming out. 
So this one, the only thing I will have from this one uh, is the liver, which looks okay. And then we have the heart, uh, which you hit uh, with the round. So the projectile hit the heart. So this is destroyed. I can't use it for human consumption. It's destroyed. Could use it for the dogs maybe. Uh, but this um, uh, round was with lead, and the lead is probably in here, so we don't use it. The last thing I'm going to do now is to take off the head, because we collect all the under jaws uh, to age them. This one I know is a calf, but from two and a half years and older, you need to check the front teeth to make sure if it's three or four or five or six, etc. Uh, but we also uh, reckon the length and the body weight that gives us a factor of condition. So I'm always cutting off the heads. You see when I cut here, the spinal cord is being punctured and everything is just naturally opening. Like that and I can cut it off, like this. So now we got both the hind and the calf uh, ready for this room for the night. And we never ever, either it's with the skin or if it's de-skinned, put it below 12 degrees before after minimum 12 hours. So that machine up on the wall there makes this room become 12 degrees very quickly and it stays 12 degrees till the same time about uh, in the morning tomorrow and then it's been 12 hours before we de-skin and put it into the chilling room uh, and that's very important because we don't want the meat to shorten and make it tough we want it to be very tender and delicious and that's how we do it so this room is very important part of conditioning the animals before in the fridge and maturing the fridge and then processing back in the same room here but then everything is without skin when it comes back and the room's been cleaned before as well. There is a real method to Trigger's meat preparation. Not everyone will have these facilities but as he says it's all about hygiene, hygiene, hygiene and if you're not in an environment to do the beast justice probably best not pull the trigger in the first place.